Hello, and welcome back to Tides of Numenera. I'm gonna slightly change the title every time. All right. Ugh. I think we've uh, read that hint before. Or at least a hint very similar to it, so, you know. Um, oh good, I'm glad that it zoomed all the way back in. Now, I'm fairly sure we have a quest for her to find a book, and uh, I don't remember if we did anything else. I don't even remember if we still got the stuff we bought. Oh, we do. Good. Good. Why didn't I sell that? Bit of an odd choice there. Oh well. Moving on. Uh, I think we need to find out how to sleep. I think first and foremost that would be a good idea. Well then, I think we can see what's happening to him. Uh, shall we find out what's going on over here? A stout, middle-aged man stands atop the execution platform. He wears the badge of a city official, and a fringe of dreadlocks hangs down to his shoulders from his otherwise bald pate. He gives you a disinterested look as you approach. Please, stay back with the others. What's going on here? He casts a brief glance over his shoulder towards Riss. The prisoner, Riss of Flatwater, is being publicly executed as a warning to all who would flout the laws of Sagus Cliffs. What is Riss's crime? Nah, I don't care. That's a good enough explanation for me. Uh, no. I don't want to watch how fast you can run. I want to talk to this man with edible metals. What? Actually, I think that might be a woman. Yes. Apparently, I can't talk to him about his edible, his edible metals. Let's talk to the sculptor. I'm sure he'll have something interesting to say. I was joking. Oh well. This portly man's cracked and bleeding hands are always moving, picking fretfully at his thick lips, running through his thinning hair, or molding aimless shapes in the air. His clothes are marked with paint, dust, dried blood, and clay. His eyes brim with frustrated tears as he studies the strangely familiar sculptures arrayed about him. A soul like slivers of ice, he mutters. Fingertips long, shriveled, sharp. Screams trapped in the flesh. She holds him in place. She's killing him. He's not looking at her. Why? Why isn't he? Afraid? No. He claws absently at his sparse beard. What am I not seeing? What am I missing? A potential customer. Ho, ho, ho. And this one, though. What? No, you're not. He says, effortlessly drawing you into his self-directed tirade. No one wants these. They're honest, but ugly. Death pulled from dead stone. He coughs a cloud of dust. And I wouldn't sell it to anyone in any case. Not even for a tuft of bread. None of them are worth buying. None of them are right. I am Zalfoy. Stone carver, sculptor, divine painter of living eyes, and in this challenge, my greatest work, my talent has finally abandoned me. He sweeps a scornful hand at the sculptures. Behold my art, wanderer. Witness these dull stumps, these crude replicas of a, supply, of a sublime being. What is it you think I've made? Do this, do this with the skill you don't have any, any power with. <laughs> Ah, uh, this is... Oh, I can... I can expect... Let's do 60. Why not? <laughs> I'm not surprised. Failure. You study the sculpture intently. Memory teases your mind, but leaves you empty. Zalfoy entirely misinterprets your long silence. Gods, it's even worse than I thought. You can't tell what you're looking at, can you? No. Why should you? Zalfoy says with gloomy satisfaction. I barely understand it myself. The only purpose of these sculptures serve as tombstones for my once monumental talent. Zalfoy kneads his eyes with his fingers. It is meant to be a portrayal of a man and the amorphous predator that devoured him. You stare at the sculptures and memory immediately clicks into place. 
this towering thing is the true form of the creature that pursues you. Zalfoy has sculpted the sorrow. It's Zalfi. It's not Zalfoy. Fucking good. Saw this creature on a cold night not long ago. Smoking her own as a blackened light drew me to my window. Zalf Zalfi says, shaping the scene with his palms. And there, on the street below, was she, gripping a man in her talons. Before my very eyes, she ripped his essence from him, leaving him a steaming husk. He drops his hands. But what do you care? You don't grasp the importance of capturing such a subject. Um... This... this is... oh, okay. Uh, uh, of course I do. She's mysterious and fascinating. Sure. She? Zalfoy stares at you, dumbfounded. You think I'm trying to sculpt the killer? He says, and then immediately corrects himself. Of course I am. I've succeeded, in fact. She is beauty and vengeance incarnate. What artist worth his metal couldn't capture such a being? But she doesn't need to be remembered. How could anyone forget such a lethal creature? Blue tide raised a tiny amount. St still don't know what these tides do. No, the source of my ruin is this damnable man. Zalfoy points a trembling finger at the faceless human cradled in the statue's talons. A charred, oddly familiar pattern etched on the stone head. He stared eternity in the face and did not blink. But he will be forgotten unless I capture him here. And I cannot do that unless I know what drove him. Zalfoy swallows. The moment he fell, I ran for the street. But the Dendro her claimed his body and took it away. Probably to their foul chapel in the underbelly. Now I'll never know who he was. I'll look into this five time by. Making a note. In an instant. <laughs> I mean, sure, let's talk to, talk to Tall Magger. As you approach, the wild-haired woman eyes you speculatively and whispers something to her companions. They burst out laughing and a slight smirk plays about her lips. I have, a, I have an axe now. I will cut you. A breathing mask dangles from a cord around her neck and you can see where it has cut permanent grooves into her face. She ruffles her hair, messing it still further, and sings out. Come to buy a slave, cast off. If you've come to me, you must want something of the sort. Uh, I don't know, what have you got? She scowls. Right now, nothing. I've sold most of my stock, and then, well, let's make a deal. I know who, or at least what, you are. I've had dealings with cast-offs before. I've got knowledge about your kind that might be useful to you. But it comes at a price. Look, I came here to buy slaves. I didn't come here for information. Actually, I didn't know what I came here for. I don't know who you are. Uh, what do you know about castoffs? She narrows her eyes. As I said, I've dealt with your kind. I know what you can do, what you're capable of. You're devious, cruel, manipulative people. She scans her retainers and shrugs. I say this because I know you want my information. Now you know why I want payment up front. One of my wards has run off. She's taken a head wound, not my doing. And I've been watching after her. I don't know where she's gone, but I suspect she's headed to Cliff's Edge. Plenty of other urchins clamoring her about the place, and she'd find it easy to blend in. Sadly, my troop and I are detained here, so we can't go ourselves. She's a scrawny child, name of Rin. Head wound, but it's covered by dark curly hair. Has a little necklace around her throat. Babbles about her gods. Go get her for me, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Up, oh, sure, why not? Don't take long. My time is valuable, cast off. I... I still want to cut you. Do you have a name? These people have names. Don't want to talk to them, though. Hello, random citizenry. This couple stands together, their, shade, their shared gaze fixed away from you. No words pass between them. Instead, they share a silent language of tenderness. Their bodies turn subtly towards each other, forming a private space between them. His hand reaches for hers, and without looking, she claims it. 
Still looking past you, they smile together. His is a curving line carved in oak. Hers is unabashed and radiant as a lantern on a starless night. Now I feel kind of like a perv. Turning, you see the object of their attention. A young boy darting between the stalls and playing in the dust. Each distant, exhilarated shout widens their respective smiles and tightens their grip on each other. Um, I feel like this is either going to be incredibly boring or incredibly disturbing, so uh, let's hope for the second. Yes, he says firmly. He's still watching the boy, but a wary stillness has spilled into his posture. Damn it, I was hoping for the no and, you know, just weirdness from there on out, but oh well. She swats his shoulder, and there's more punch than playfulness in it. Not yet, she says. We adopted Jerem, and we're waiting to see how he feels about that. Aren't we, Kalinor? His eyes flicker stubborn stubbornly, but does not respond. I, um, don't care. As you wish. <laughs> to be honest, I, I came here expecting, uh, you know, to kill some people. Not even anyone in particular, just whoever. I don't suppose there's like a rest key now that we seem to be in a fairly safe area. Oh my no. What's this? Cultist encampment? Execution ground? Oh, Prata apparently is a merchant. Let's go talk to her. Or him. I'm, I'm assuming her, because usually the name's ending with A. Anyway. I'm glad that we just walked through that guy. In the shadows cast by the folds of this merchant's cowl, you glimpse hints of verdant chitin and amber mandibles erupting from pale human flesh. Her voluminous robe... Her vol voluminous? Vol ugh. Her voluminous robes cannot hide the fact that her movements are... off. As if too many joints inhabit too little space. But her voice, her voice is a warm, tumbling flood of spoken thoughts and impulses. Fair afternoon to you. Warm, isn't it? Something begins humming in one of her pockets, and her brilliant, multifaceted eyes flicker toward an invisible point in the distance. Well, not as warm as it could be. This is the warmest minute of the week by a considerable margin. She trails off, but the hum continues. Oh, do you have one of these tattoos, too? Oh, you have one of those tattoos, too. Sorry. Anyway, can I interest you in some prime artifacts, dusty relics, Numenera of an uncertain origin? Uh, you appear to be transforming into an insect. I know, isn't it fantastic? I think it might be caused by, by the intermingling fields of the Numenera I use to organize my thoughts. Or the ones I'm selling. Maybe all of them. You never know of how a variety of ciphers, ciphers will interact with each other. They're such fun. Um, let me see what you're selling. Mm, I see. So you are the potion peddler who peddles the potions. That seems really good. I think I'm gonna... Yeah, I'm gonna leave these. I can't afford any of them just now. Well, I, I can, but... You know. Let's go up these stairs. Wait, who's this guy? That's a, that's a cheery name. Hi. How are you? This burly, armor-clad figure stands almost motionless as you approach. He regards you silently through his singular eye. The studs on his arms and the blades on his shoulders are stained and pitted with age. When he speaks, his voice is muffled and artificial, a hollow grumble that emanates from the entirety of the helmet. I am the genocide. If you ask, I must answer. Pass on, then, ex then, and exchange no words. Um, what are you? I am a blade that cannot cut, a weapon that cannot strike, a living monument to failure. He shifts his weight. You hear the frown in his voice. I was, 
Ogetsi Telkotu from the firm hand of tradition. They called me one of the Black Three. Enemies did not understand us. They took my name to mean death in a dozen extinct tongues. Call me, called me Orphan Maker, Hope Smasher, Death's Child. My armies blackened the earth and the skies. My dragoliths scoured the land. Domination is my duty. If they had known, if they had welcomed us, they might have been our thralls. Instead, they became dust. He gestures. All this, it was to have been mine in stewardship for the future of my people. It was promised, but now... His arm falls back to its side. Now I am the genocide, a relic, the last of my kind. Well, that, uh, did he? I don't remember reading that word. Well, that pretty much answered, uh... Yes. Wow, fuck you too, genocide. Uh, let's go up here. Let's go up here and see if we can find a bed. Really, really, oh, what's this? Yes. Oh, it's purple and glowing. Let's find out what's going on. Interact. As you approach the clock, there is a pause in the argument the duo next to it are having. The petite woman turns toward you. Her hair is unusual, a light, almost yellow color, and her bright eyes dominate her pretty face. Excuse me, but my colleague and I were having a discussion and... Her eyes fall upon your tattoo, and her breath catches audibly in her throat. Is this the tattoo? I thought that was just a weird fragment of hair. Her partner is an unnaturally tall man, gaunt and sour-faced, his voice sonorous, with the fingers that twitch and weave through strange contortions. Occasional light sparks in the air as he does. He turns to you and opens his mouth to speak, registers your tattoo and closes it again. His throat bobs for a moment, and he says, It is an honor. So I guess uh, these cultists are mine then, yes? She sighs. Must we indulge in this religious nonsense? Your opinion of our beliefs is noted. We have discussed our differences with you, and you made your position quite clear. Thank you. He turns back to you, anger etched on his face. He turns back you. So does he actually, like, flip me? Who's that? He collects himself. I might impose on you, on your time for a moment. Will you tell me about your tattoo? How did you shape it? Do you know why it differs from the others? Uh, what? Not yours, revered one. Her voice is the barest whisper as she curtsies. Oh, whoops, this is the other person. <laughs> you are a cast off of the Changing God. Light of brilliance, his touch is on your head. The, tat the tattoo marks you as his child. She gazes at you, enwrapped. You are not alone. Other castoffs live, and we treasure each of you. Can you let me sleep somewhere? You are welcome here, revered one. We stand ready to serve as we can. Have you any questions for us? Is there a bed anywhere? You know about a vice called a resonance chamber? Rumor and conjecture, nothing more. Idle speculation for- and now it's the other guy. <laughs> they both have the same voice, I can't remember them anyway. Rumor and conjecture, nothing more. Idle speculation from those who wish to pretend to knowledge of your sire's motivations, passed along as fact. He leans out to touch you. Have you seen it? Do you know where it is? What it does? Uh, I need to know who can repair it. So you have seen it. You have touched it. She catches herself. She seems almost overwhelmed. Your tattoo, like all the others, but this one is different. He looks at you sharply. Sharp bleh. He looks sharply at you now, all distraction gone. I do not recognize you, he says. You do not match any descriptions we have recorded. So, no, bad? She snaps her fingers as if she is finally figuring out a mystery. Your, wait, let me remember your face. She studies you carefully. You're, oh my, you're new. Are you, are you the changing god? Can it be? They got me. She reaches out to touch your sleeve. Yeah. No. 
He nods, satisfied. As I thought, you are a cast-off, one of his children. He touches you with his long-fingered hand as if in consolation. There's no shame in such a thing. Many cast-offs have come to our attention, and some of them have sought to deceive us so that they might seem more important. He smiles softly. If you're as new as we suspect, it is better for you, for us, to know the truth of your existence than to bluster and lie. Restfallen, she touches your shoulder. I want them to stop touching me. Are you... are you sure you're not... She catches herself. No, why would you lie about that? I mean, you know, why wouldn't I? With a noticeable effort, she wrenches herself into optimism and she chirps. But you're new, aren't you? You're new. Have you decided what you'll do? What you'll be? Your sire's other children have done amazing things. Amazing. And no doubt you will as well. Can I, can I be somebody who is asleep? He lays a hand on her shoulder and his voice is low, cautionary. Cass. She looks away from you for a moment, swallowing sudden tears, and he says, We have a request for you. For fa <sighs> Gestures toward the clock behind him. Dark figures circumambulate, okay? Dark figures circumambulate the, these, these clock faces. I theorize that your sire's creation of the time shields that protected this city established a connection with his future shit, this future, future shelves. Yes, good. His future selves. Given this, we believe these figures may be cast-offs, or ghosts of cast-offs, perhaps. The living shells of the bodies your creator has worn previously. His fingers shrug eloquently for him. The clock is unmoored in time, you see. We do not have a knowledge sufficient to investigate, but you might. You have a connection with he who created the clock. You should be able to align it with the present time and uncover who these figures are. A gentle, rare smile, smile appears. If you cannot, at least you will increase our, knowledge, our store of knowledge. She smiles bravely, looking between Mion and you, and says, And then we can answer the questions you might have. Right, Min? Sure. His composure breaks for a moment, and a wash of relief floods his face. This will be a true gift to knowledge, revered one. Perhaps you can find an answer where others have failed. You will have our thanks, our boundless praise. We will answer what we can for you then. Return to us, revered one. We will wait for you. I'll remember that. Can I... Can I sleep somewhere? Is that... Would that be fine? Sleeping, maybe? No? Okay. Let's go. This complex machine towers over you. Its purpose is unclear. But the three circular faces set into the ground remind you of clocks. Something is wrong with the machine, however. It's partially transparent, shimmering in the air when you look directly at it. The clock faces seem to show several different times at once. Humanoid silhouettes ripple beneath the central clock face. One places his hand against the face as though it were a glass wall. They seem to be watching you. Reach for the silhouetted figures. Your hand passes straight through the clock face, the figures, and the entire structure. It's as if the entire machine wasn't even there. As you pull your hand away, a memory strikes you as powerfully as if someone took a club to your chest. You are working at the clock. It is no longer transparent, but perfectly solid. There is a noise behind you. So they've come, the three traitors. They think to surprise you, but through the powers of the clock, you have foreseen this moment. There is the faintest sound of metal sliding against leather. You slap a hand on the central clock face, activating the clock's arcane powers. You're not sure what it will do to them, but it's better than what they'll do to you. There is a flash. Arcs of energy stretch out from the clock over your shoulders to your would-be attackers. You don't see what happens to them, but they quickly disappear along with their screams. As the last shreds of the memory fade, a swirl of energy passes through your body. Cold barbs prick every muscle. Suddenly, tidal forces arc from the clock to three ancient devices in the cultist encampment. 
the clock recognized something inside you, or maybe vice versa. Either way, you have inadvertently activated the nearby devices. I'll remember that. Who will? You will? Am I playing a Telltale game now? Well, let's interact with these. It's a nuclear bomb. Shit. As you approach this device, Circus Minor changes around you. People are dressed differently and speak differently. All new structures appear, including an enormous building rising from the edge of the square. You look down at the device, a series of images flit across its surface. They don't appear related to the changes around you. You see faces of other people and places, all of them familiar. Let's, uh, let's look more closely at the changes. Circus Minor looks almost completely different. All the people are dressed strangely, and though they speak the truth, they use many terms and phrases that you don't understand. The square has changed as well. All of the tents are gone. The buildings are more colorful and less weathered. One building in particular rises from the edge of the square, a tower of purple rock some 50 stories high. A mural is painted on the side, though you can't see the details from here. Oh, excuse me. Let's look closely at the changes of... That's not... I can't be bothered. <laughs> as soon as you focus on them, you feel a warmth on your head where your tattoo is. The images respond to your thoughts, slowing and changing at your whim. It's something about your body that allows you to do this, which perhaps means that only you can even see the images. You immediately recognize the pictures as pieces of memory, specifically the three memories you saw back in the fathoms of your mind. Oh good, so we could go back to the underwater city, where I think everything was going to shit. We could go back to the lush valley, where if I remember correctly everything was going to shit. Or we could look at the memory of the city under siege, where definitely everything was going to shit. Actually, if I remember correctly, the lush valley was more or less okay. Other than we had lost control of all our servitors. Let's do that, sure. Somehow, you know the memory is from a long time ago. Centuries ago, probably, a man and a woman, both with tattoos like your own, are surveying a lush, secluded valley for some purpose you cannot recall. As you review the memory, you get a strange feeling in your mind that you can only describe as a query. The device wants something from you. Suddenly, you remember the memories in this device in the device are possibilities but you can lock one of the memories here so it is the only one that displays you don't remember what purpose that served though let's uh, look at the memory of the underwater city the memory is recent two men both with tattoos like your own are in an underwater city searching for something the denizens of the city chase them from their quarry and ultimately surround and capture them. Let's look at this one. Somehow, you know this memory is ancient. It might have occurred a thousand years ago. A man and a young girl race through the streets of Sagus Cliffs. All around them, the city is attacked by a terrible people. The Tabut, you recall. The man takes them to an ancient machine somewhere in the city, then he and the girl disappear. Uh, let's do the century- no, the ancient one first. Leave the device alone. And then, uh, we'll go to the middle one and do the centuries old and the recent one over here. A strange feeling comes over you as, as you approach this device, as if someone were sneaking up on you. In the corner of your eye, when you look, there's no one there. It feels like something is different, though. 
but you can't put your finger on what. A series of images flit across the surface of the device itself. They don't appear related to the changes around you. You see the faces of other people and places, all of them familiar. The, sen the centuries old this one. You leave the, leave the device in the As you approach the device, Circus Minor is thrown into chaos. Buildings are on fire, people are screaming and running for their lives, while armored soldiers hunt them. None of them seem to pay any attention to you, though. It's some kind of vision, not reality. And, and then this one again, which I've read before. The images of the man and the girl are the only ones that play across the surface of this device. They run past the enemy soldiers and then disappear at the machine in an endless loop. <laughs> Smash the device! As you lock the third image, the air around the device trembles, and the other devices in the square begin to glow as though they're about to do something. Just as suddenly, the glow on, the glow on all three devices fades. The image you had locked to this device flickers, and then the three memories flit across its surface once more. The device seems to have reset itself. Well, we just smash it open. <laughs> let's, uh, let's not, actually. Or do I have to now? Oh no, I don't. Okay. Um, I still think that the besieged city goes here. Leave the device alone. Did that say look more closely? Yes. Oh, it did. Circus Minor is under attack. Squads of armored soldiers roam the streets, hunting and killing anyone they find. Mobs of people flee in terror, with only a few hapless souls trying and failing to fight them off. The soldiers are completely encased in jagged metal armor. You can't even tell if they're human. Looking beyond the carnage, the square in this vision looks wildly different. Many of the buildings that are on fire don't exist at all when you step away from the device, having been replaced by other structures. Let's leave the device alone. So I think I had the underwater city here last time. So let's put the lush valley, the lush valley in. Why not? Yes. And the underwater city here. Well then, I uh, I guess I did that wrong. Nice. Presumably, I should uh, read a little bit more closely what the changes are about. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Let's put this one in here then. Oh, damn. Let's look more closely. Uh, this one, the recent one. This is the order I did before, isn't it? My, uh, my jimmies are going to be a little bit rustled. A little bit rustled if, uh, if this turns out to be right. Even though I'm pretty sure I did it before. That's awfully odd. Okay. Maybe I misclicked without realizing the first time. As soon as you lock this third image, a final surge of energy arcs through the air from the device to the clock itself. The clock shines for a moment, then becomes solid. 
fixed into a single state. Oh, excuse me. At the same time, the device in front of you goes dark. The images disappear, as does the strange view of the city's past. Gained 3 XP. And that is how you fix a clock. Apparently. I, I don't know much about clock repair, to be honest. Let's talk to her, because she said she would remember something. Apparently. I'm not going to read any of this. I can't be bothered. Uh... Why are you telling me about the color changing gum? about the order of truth. I wish I knew what the general direction was. I'm assuming it's over here. Uh, how are you holding up? Sure. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure I just met you. But yeah, whatever. Oh, my clock is loud. Alright. Uh, can I sleep somewhere now? Please? You fixed the clock! I knew you could do it! I knew it! She shoots a triumphant smile at Mimian. You must tell us what you saw. Who were those figures? Were they cast offs? What did they say? Were you able to retrieve them? Nations, Cass. We must first congratulate our guest. He turns to you. Masterfully done, revered one. A performance worthy of your sire. He bows gravely to you. You are most welcome here. Can I sleep somewhere then? He frowns. Unfortunately, our task is not entirely complete. We told you our price. Th that decision stands. I don't remember that at all, but I'm sure you did. Isn't this the- oh, I need to interact with the right. Yeah, I forgot about that. The machine is solid now. Each of the three clock faces shows a single time. Though none of them point to any time measurement that you understand. Ooh. Sorry, that was a yawn. You lean closer to the central clock face. Three shadowy figures still lurk within. Their features almost discernible now. Suddenly, the figures surge out of the clock toward you. Intense pressure strikes your head like a steel spike. Then everything goes black. You wake up with full health and all of your stats restored. Oh god. Never mind, that last bit was a lie. If you guys are gonna fight me, can we just not? Hey, look, it's one of these staircases. <laughs> yes, now. Let's talk to this person. The three figures before you are disoriented. They don't even seem to notice you at first. All three of them have a tattoo like yours. Castoffs. What befell us? The woman is dressed in powerful looking armor. Her face bears several scars, yet her eyes have the innocence of a child. Did he do something? Are we still in the clock? I do not believe so. The second figure is tall, dressed all in black. Its height is exaggerated further by a violent, fish-like crest on the top of its head. Its large yellow eyes are squinted, scanning all around. There was a woman outside the clock, but it wasn't... It was her. The third figure points at you. He is small, wiry, and tense, as though he expects danger. He carries a shield on his back. She's a cast-off, he says, looking at your tattoo. Can't say I recognize her, though. Um, 
What are you talking about? How's it going? We were ingested into your head. I saw it. How is that possible? He eyes you suspiciously. Who are you? I'm a cast off like you. I'm the latest one. I'm a cast off like you. Nobody. I've been victim here like you. I don't know what's going on. I'll ask the questions. What were you doing in that clock? I'm a cast off. Don't even worry about it. My dominant chides have shifted? What? Why? Okay. She raises one eyebrow significantly higher than the other. I've met scores of castoffs, yet you are a new one to my eyes and ears. How can that be? D Diviacit Diviaticu. Yep. Diviaticu is the youngest castoff I am aware of. Have you remained hidden since your birth? This one's your dominant one now, whatever that means, if you can check that somewhere. I think we might have been trapped in that clock for centuries, Kamos. Something about it messed with our perception. The Val... The Var... The Varyelin, shall we go with? Sure. The Varyelin. The Varyelin looks up at the ceiling. Or where the ceiling would be if there were one. Time is an illusion. How long is the wrong question? It turns its enormous, bulbous eyes to you. What is this place? Where are we? Uh, I don't know. The Varyelin shuts its eyes. Six nostrils open wide as it inhales deeply. Our consciousnesses were ripped from our bodies when the Changing God activated his clock. Then when you appeared, it happened again. Our minds ripped from, the chronal, from their chronal prison. It looks to its friends. I cannot be certain, but I believe this is part of some vast mental construct. He turns to you. Your mental construct. Oh, thanks. His eyes become nearly as large as the Varyelans. What? You mean we just went from one prison to another? He grips you by the shoulders. You did this. If this is your mind, then let us out. Uh, I, I don't know how to get you out of here. Relax, friend, sister. Whether for days or centuries, we survived that clock. We will survive this. If time is an illusion, then it is not our enemy. We will find a way. I mean, on the bright side, you know, you can run up and down stairs a lot. Why can't you get out of here? Why did the changing girl trap you in that clock anyway? Is it because you were going to murder him? Because that's what it sounded like in that one memory. Ah, yes. She looks down, embarrassed. The three of us once worked alongside our sire, helping him with his research after he'd brought the Order of Truth to Sagus Cliffs. We... we saw him for what he was. Selfish. Arrogant. He doesn't care about us, not a single one of his children. He crosses his arms and looks away bitterly. All of his projects were always about him. He didn't care if anyone got hurt in the process. We betrayed him. Unlike the others, the Varyelin looks you directly in the eye. We meant to stun him, to capture him before he could escape to another body, but he was too quick for us. He activated the clock, tearing our minds from our bodies, and trapping us eternally. Uh, let me look. Let me look around. I'll be back. Let's go. I've decided I'm gonna walk down all the stairs. I don't really know what I'm expecting yeah. to happen here. What is this? Character abilities. All right. Forward. Onward. Rather than uh, looking around and doing that, let's see if we can find these tides that I keep hearing so much about. Oh, are these they? Maybe? Oh, here we go. Our dominant tides are gold and silver, apparently. I really want to know what the tide for just killing shit is. Whatever, whatever, just, you know, being angry and killing people. That tide is the one I want. 
Uh, right. My guess would be that that is red. That was helpful. Uh, let's see what's over here. <laughs> Wonder what the map looks like. <laughs> uh, Alright, I guess we're talking to them again. The three of them mutter to each other, looking around this strange space as they try to find another way out. Well met, sister. Have you discovered anything new about our predicament? Why can't you get us out of here? Weren't you listening? We were trapped in that clock for centuries. I'm looking for a way out, believe me. But if Diviatiku says it's your mind, then it's your show. So long as we live, there is hope. One of us will find a way. I don't see a way out. The Valyern... <clears throat> the Varyelin stretches its neck, putting its face within a hand span of yours. It seems to be examining you. Then it says, your mind. Only you have the power to change. What he's trying to say is that this place was created for your body, or perhaps by your body. Our sire placed the our sire placed within each of us unique gifts and abilities. For example, I have never heard tell of another cast off who could trap consciousnesses the way you have. She gives you a warm smile. He would not have created this space for you without also giving you a means by which to move through it. Think, what other gifts did our creator bestow upon you? I'm a jack of all trades. <laughs> Oh, dear. <laughs> so am I, kid, and yet we're both still stuck in here. You see, that's just the type of thing that you do. It was a path you chose, not something our sire gave you, nor a means to freedom. Um, this is probably the one we're interested in. Perhaps if there were any memories here to recover. He curls his lip and looks around. Maybe I just don't know what memories look like, but I don't see anything. Hmm. It would seem we are in agreement, villain. It's, it's villain. <laughs> None the knows name. Uh, this one. Diviatiku shakes his head. I can see what you speak of, it says, and you get a momentary impression that its eyes can see through you. This aspect describes you just as I am Varyelin, Villian is observant, and Kamos is foolish. I, obje <coughs> I object to that characterization. He gives a kind chuckle. He's not wrong, and you know it. At her wounded look, he raises his hands placatingly. It's the truth. Anyway, you've gotten us out of twice as much trouble as you get us into. The Varyelin speaks to you. These aspects are descriptors of who we are, but they are not us. That, they cho that you chose your aspect says quite a lot, but I do not believe that it is enough to set us free. Um, I think I have the ability you're talking about. You must! She looks at her compatriots and back to you. We each have our gifts, given to us by our sire, for a specific purpose. His purpose, of course, but a purpose nonetheless. She presses a hand to her chest. They say, for example, that, foolish though I may be, I have nigh magical gifts of speech. That is not something I chose, nor learned, but it is who he made me to be. Probably should have given her the, uh, the lighter voice. Oh well. He rubs his hand along the edge of his shield. I am a master of defensive arts. Our sire learned them when he was in my body. Probably built my body to excel at it. I wouldn't call it a gift, but it's me. Yeah. I am one with the shadows. I live in them. I breathe them. This is not some esotery I discovered, but a unique ability our sire chose for me while he was in my body. Wait, am I the changing god? Am I the player, the changing god? She gives you a kind smile. The gift is in you. Perhaps you have just forgotten. Our sire wouldn't have made this place for you without granting you the power to get out. 
Focus. Find the answer inside yourself. This one. You rifle through your memories, past everything you actually remember, to those memories you didn't create yourself. There must be a key or a door, anything that would help you to escape this fathom of your mind. Just as you're about to give up, you find something, a cluster of sparks, nascent abilities deep within the core of your being. You sense the abilities to speak eloquently, to use a shield with a master's skill, to lurk among the shadows as though they were hope. I'm ready to learn something new. Tutorials, advancement, your travels have left you more experience. Allow you to advance this will grant you um, the level up. Okay. None of these seem particularly suited to creating a path out of this place. But as you sift through them, you know that you are trapped here, not because it is some puzzle your sire left for you to solve, but because you are not yet whole. This is another part, the last part, of deciding who you are. In completing yourself, you will be able to open a path back to the calm of your mind. Wow, natural charisma? All right. Oh, so we can either be awfully persuasive, or we can be um, a rogue, or we can do this. I don't want to use a shield. I want to do this. Sure, yeah, this seems fine. All right, lads. That's it. You did it. Does this mean we can go back to the real world? I don't think so, Helene. But it does mean we are free, finally. He turns to you. Thank you, friend. Go. We will follow. All right. Yes. Still going yeah. downstairs, though. Oh man, not one of these. I don't even have any health. Can I talk my way out of this situation? <laughs> really just wanted to sleep, you know? That is, that is what I wanted from this. Uh, it's this guy. I don't remember what his voice was. I saw what happened. Are you alright? That thing almost killed you. What did happen? <laughs> It blasted you out of that part of your mind. Y yeah, I got that. His voice is somber. The sorrow must be gathering its strength, taking spaces in your mind to keep you from reaching your full potential. I don't know why it doesn't just destroy you. Maybe the fragments aren't strong enough. Yet. Wow, that's reassuring. It's alright, though. We have more important things to do, right? Like, get that chamber fixed. You always here. He shrugs. Where else would I be? I found the resonance chamber, but it's broken. Yeah, I saw that. I don't see everything you do out there in the world, but I definitely saw that. You have to find a way to fix it. You are not helping me at all. <laughs> by, by the way, you know the main quests you've been doing? Let me just recap for you. Okay, great. Still, uh, still haven't found a place to sleep, huh? Yes. Hmm. What's your ability or skill? Now, I can't remember which is which. Let's see if it's ability I want. Never mind, it was skill. <laughs> so close. 
Um, oh, that, it's also not here. Edge? Wait, these are edges? Uh, okay. Right, this is what I was expecting, but, uh, but uh, all right. Extra effort, no? Let's do an ability or skill. Um, remind me what my ability is. Infuse weapon. Um, I kind of want to increase intimidation. Just for the hell of it, you know. Just for a, a fun old time. A good, a good fun old, a fun old good time. Moving on. <laughs> Still haven't found anywhere to sleep. Oh, wait, do I need to talk to them now? Ah, you return to us. You have completed your task. What did you see inside the clock? Tell us! <laughs> she is nearly breathless with excitement. Uh, I met these people. <laughs> What are they now? Oh, my blue tide raised a bit. Disappointment creases her face. I know these names. They're not new to us. They were favored servants of your creators. Of your creator. Castoffs who served him well, indeed. Diviaticu brought the order of truth to Sega's cliffs. But they betrayed their holy trust and disappeared. He sighs. Nevertheless, we will honor our arrangement. You sought answers about who might repair the resonance chamber. We know that your sire built it with the aid of another cast-off, still unknown to us. Perhaps one of your siblings might know where to find him, or her. So basically, you were like, oh, I can't help you, but go ask someone else. Just, I don't know who, but ask someone else. And in return, I had to fix this? That was not worth. I know of only one other cast-off still in the city. The albino assassin Metkina. Metkina, yeah. They call her the White Death. She wore a camouflaging cloak and brought destruction in her wake. The last I heard of her, she was in the underbelly. He restrains a shudder. Seek her, but be wary. Oh wow, another 100 XP. Now this woman's leveled up. Uh, oh. I can only do these. Okay. Ah, let's do this. None shall stop me now. Okay. Yes. Well. Of course. Let's uh leave the area to go over here. I really wanted to sleep. Yes, now. Really, really wanted to sleep. I kind of thought that would be something I could do here. Go. There's also somewhere we can leave the area. Right. Well then, uh, let's go in here and then end the stream. Because, you know, why not? I feel like I've made a terrible decision in coming here. Well, anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that if you did enjoy, you will come back and watch some more. I stream from Wednesdays to Sundays. Uh, Wednesday through Saturday are streams of this. And uh, Sunday is a modding stream, because I'm making a mod for Fallout 4. It's, it's a quest mod. It has stuff in it. Um, I've got a Twitter account and a YouTube account if you would like to count... If, if you'd like to count... If you'd like to catch these streams live, uh, those are both good ways of knowing when I'll be streaming live, because I post a notification to them uh, five minutes before I go live. Um, I think I think that's all I have to say, so thank you again for watching, and have a fantastic day! <laughs>